How long how long have you guys been in the states? Like were you born there? Were you from the Philippines first and then you moved to the states? Yeah, I'm the latter. I was born in the Philippines. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> the latter. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Half a Nice Day Podcast with your host, Janine. And Joshua. And today, for our episode, we are very, very blessed to have two new guests all the way from California, West JR Coast. and Blessy. And uh, it's it's really cool having these guys. We just wrapped up the podcast, actually, but... Uh, we dove into some really good topics. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know them from their TikTok. TikTok Guys, videos, they have 530k yeah. followers, so I'm sure you've seen them. Yeah, and uh, you must have seen their series of use this in a sentence, and they use Filipino puns, and it's it's really entertaining, guys. Anyone, everyone should check them out. We'll plug in their handles as well, and where we can find them on social media. But here's the episode, guys, and I hope you enjoy it. Before we start off the podcast and the interview session, I'm going to give out a happy news of the week. Bling! <laughs> JR is like, what, is, what did we get ourselves into? <laughs> okay, it's a very, very short happy news of the week. So, a research um, in the Maasai Giraffe of Tanzania. So, they realized that friends um, make our lives better. And you said you reveal so that female giraffes live longer when surrounded by female friends that help with raising children and reduce harassment for males. So, that's nice to know because not just like people, but also animals live longer when they're together. Yeah, we. I think we all need companionship and. Uh, I think that's re- another reason why we started this podcast, so we can uh, meet different people, interact with different people, and we've met now Jaren and Blessy, and it's going to be, uh, we're all friends now. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. No, but I think what's good with, with um, JR and Blessy's TikTok and their videos is that they spread happiness through these little snippets of videos, and I think a lot of Filipinos, well, not just Filipinos now, you have a huge audience, are... No, they 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 get these little nuggets of happiness from you guys. So thank you so much for sharing those little puns and your little snippets of happiness in your life. So maybe you can just let us know, like, how did you guys get started on like TikTok? Or I'm not sure if TikTok was the first platform that you guys used. Yeah, actually, it wasn't technically. Well, we just created accounts throughout all the major social media. So it's like we, of course, we wanted to do YouTube. Uh, we just signed up for our, like uh, an account for like Twitter, Facebook, um, yeah, TikTok, and Instagram, Twitch, yeah. Instagram, yeah, that one too. So yeah, we we just started um, creating content m- m- mainly for YouTube, um, but then it wasn't until um, Jared's little brother started mm-hmm. like uh, creating TikToks, and TikTok TikTok was getting big, or it was already big yeah, at the time, sort of, yeah. Like, it was, like, the, like, I started getting on TikTok because my, my little brother, who's just turned 10, and then I was just kind of playing around on it in, like, March of, like, 2020, right? And then after that, um, we started to get on it and just play with it a little bit, um, but we didn't do anything serious until about, like, November 2020 last year um, when our video started to take off. So it was kind of, like, just, we were just playing around on it, and then it something happened, and we're like, oh, okay, well, it's working, so let's keep doing this. Mm-hmm. Do you remember which video or what vi- what type of video that was that made you think, okay, we're actually gaining traction? Uh, one of the only Filipinos, the puns. Yeah. The puns. <laughs> the only Filipinos will understand ones. Um, then there was also like the, the prank, the, actually. The, the breakup one? Was uh, yeah, I one? think so. Yeah, the first video that was like got into the thousands of we're like, wait, that's thousands. possible. That was like, <laughs> Big breakup video that like you know there's there's all these pranks with couples on tiktok yeah and i was like hey i totally should break up with you with the hidden camera yeah. like you know, my phone right here on like in the door of my car and i was like we should totally break up and she wasn't like didn't believe me at all so yeah. she was laughing the entire time yeah um and so that when we woke up the next morning and that one was like racked up a few thousand views mm-hmm. we're like wait that's that's weird like mm-hmm. we weren't expecting that yeah and then like a couple of videos later was the filipino puns mm-hmm. and then that one started to take off with like 
30k views and at that point we'd only had like like what 2,000 followers yeah 2,000 no it was less than that we were like <laughs> oh, a couple right, hundred right, right. yeah um and like you know 20 views like yeah. 200 views maybe so that was like a huge spike and then we started to do the Filipino pun thing and then you know um that became like a series and that gave us most of our traction you know that's actually how I found out about you guys like one day uh I'm barely on TikTok but when I am like I just keep on scrolling uh, but it was the time when I saw you guys. I'm like, who are these guys? Like, yeah. I, I first thought you were actually based in Dubai as well, but then uh, after doing some research and everything, and then I found out you guys are actually based on the on the West Coast. So I was like, oh cool, they're Filipinos like all across the world and taking advantage of this TikTok platform. It was really cool seeing you guys, to be honest. Like it was, it was quite very quite funny, and uh, it was uh, the first things I was seeing. Like, hey, Blessly, can you use this in a sentence? I'm like, yeah, okay, so this is, like, their their niche. This is their market and stuff. Yeah, and then a couple of friends started sharing it on their um, on their platform as well, on Instagram. And I'm like, okay, they're they're actually getting famous now. Yeah. It's, it's super cool. It's super cool to see. You were talking about the breakup video. So maybe let's just get into... Sorry, there's, like, airplanes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just windows. No worries. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so you were talking about the breakup video earlier. Maybe let's get into the relationship a little bit. Like how how did you guys meet and how long have you been together? Oh yeah. Um so we met at a dance studio where we were both teaching. Um his class was uh right after my class and so we just saw each other in passing. Um so yeah, that's how we met. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I was. I would always see her as like a sweaty mess after class. Like, <laughs> That's when you know you're in love, you know, when you see her in her natural habitat. <laughs> Let's go to my class now. The advanced his, students. His class is always packed, by the way, because he has the BTS. I one. just walk in and be like, oh, in my class, it's time to be full. <laughs> How was your one How student your- blessing? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you look like you had a good class. <laughs> <laughs> student really enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, that's how we met. And then um, he invited me. Uh, well, we followed each other on Instagram, and then we started hanging out afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then we've been dating for a year and almost a year and a half. Yeah, almost a year and a half now. Cute. I think that's where it always starts, right? When you follow each other on Instagram, you're like, okay. I know what's happening here. So it's like, here. So like JR slid into the DM and then you tried to shoot your shot and it worked. Who messaged who first? Is it you, JR? Uh, well, we talked in person first. Yeah. Because it was like, oh, like, I mean, what did, did I ask you how class was or what did I say? Or like, Something like job, that. Something like about just, my tripod or... Just in passing, know. like, you know, she's she's finishing class and I'm yeah. starting the class. So I'd be like, oh, like good job or whatever Mm -hmm. like a good class or something or Mm -hmm. so it was just in passing and then making small talk like oh nice tripod i didn't care about the tripod (laughs) 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 Uh, yeah but um where do you get tripods amazon Um, just just to make small talk there's just one point there's one point in time where i was like oh probably should hang out like i don't i wasn't like interested interested but like you know just to be friends yeah i invited her to hang out with my friends at karaoke because i'm like well she's filipino she probably likes karaoke so for sure and, and turns sure out it was right wrong. <laughs> turns out it was right. true. yeah and i was just Hop open to you know to karaoke to have, yeah to meet to meet more people so i was just like okay why not it's nice it's cool <laughs> and it seems that you guys have been dating for more like if you look at your videos it's it's nice to see even if you say that you've been dating for a year it's been like you've been dating for for a while now mm. and it, it it seems like you're super comfortable with each other and is that would you say is that because you know you're you're from the same culture you share the same you know the same values with each other yeah i would say definitely the same values and um well since we're creating uh, comedy content we also share the same humor yeah <laughs> Same sense of humor, I think, is pretty big. Yeah. I think the, the same culture is, is like, helps out, too, just because it's easy to connect and understand someone when you have similar perspectives or similar cultural backgrounds. Um, I think just, it's, like, a natural, like, how many common denominators do you have? Like, for us, it's, like, dance, music, Filipino culture, hu- uh, our humor, sense of humor. And so that's, I think that's why we meshed really well, really fast. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, how long? How long have you guys been in the states? Like, were you born there? Were you from the Philippines first, and then you moved to the states? 
Yeah, I'm the latter. I was born in the Philippines. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and <laughs> the latter. Um, I was born in the Philippines and I moved here when I was 12. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, I, was yeah. There, I saw. Um, I moved here when I was 12, but actually not to California right away. I was uh, moved to Washington State first. And then I didn't move to California until like four years ago. So, or yeah, actually five now, five years ago. Okay. <laughs> and so, so that is, that is how long I've been here for like about 14, 15 years now. Um, and yeah, I, I first moved to Northern California from my mom's tummy. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, that's the first place I moved to, uh, Northern California, and then I came down here for college, and then I just stayed in SoCal ever since. Okay. So, are your parents as well with you guys, or you're, like, you're like completely on your own over there right now? <laughs> Both. Yeah, well, my family's all in NorCal, so I'm, I'm here by myself. Mm-hmm. And I am with my mom, but uh, my dad is in the Philippines right now, actually. Right. Okay. Do you guys visit the Philippines often? Or is it? Uh, I was there pre-quarantine, actually. Like end of 2019. Yeah, end of 2019, just to visit family, and most of my relatives are there. So. Right. Yeah. Which city or town? Oh, so, oh sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, most of my relatives from my mom's side is in Mindoro. Okay. And my dad's side is in Batangas, so I do tend to have the Batangueña accent when I speak to them. Right. That's pretty thick. <laughs> is it the one with the? Is it the one with the alae? Eh? Yeah, mm. dine do uh, anuga. Yeah. <laughs> anuga. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Right see, now. see, he pretends that he knows. Fl- I never Tagalog. lived in the Philippines, so I oh, I can't goodness. relate to a lot of these things, especially like different cities and different provinces and different dialects. But I just know yeah. Tagalog, and I know like Manila Tagalog. Yeah, because he's from which part again? My mom is from uh, Bulacan. Yeah, yeah, Bulacan. I don't know if you know it. And then I'm from the northern part. Um, it's called Subic. So where it's mostly beaches and stuff like that. So it's about three to four hours away from Manila. But he's more of a Manila Manila boy. Yeah, I love the Philippines. I love the, I love the city. I love the the city that never sleeps. <laughs> and how about EJR? Which which part of the Philippines are you from? Uh, so my family's from Pangasinan. Oh, that's closer to where my my mom is from. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Like close by there. Yeah. <laughs> You know that um, there's this other comedian, I forgot his name, but uh, he's Filipino and he's also from Pangasinan. I forgot his name though, but but I think a lot of funny people usually come from that area, maybe. (laughs) I forgot his name, I can't remember. Oh, I can't think of it right now. (laughs) Is he like a stand-up comedian? He's a stand-up comedian. Ah, cool. There's another stand-up comedian named JR too. He plays the guitar. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking about, I think. JR de Guzman, JR de Guzman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, he's, he was, I saw him on TikTok before. Ah. <laughs> yeah, we're all related somehow. <laughs> and I think Jay is such a common name as well. So it's like, you could be anyone to me. <laughs> Jay, so, so na- now we can say that JRs are funny. JRs from the Philippines are yeah, funny. JR. What does JR stand for? Uh, it doesn't stand for anything. It's a nickname. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Okay. okay, okay. 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 Junior. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's junior. Uh, so you guys have been there for for quite a while. Would you say that you consider you know the U.S. home, or do you see yourselves moving to the Philippines in the future? Um, I consider the U.S. home now, just because a big chunk of my life I have lived here. Um, as much as most of my childhood was from there, I didn't really go around on my own, so I'm not too familiar with like the locations anymore. Um, but definitely, it's just because most of my relatives are there. I would say just it, Philippines is just a place to visit, like to vacation in for me. Um, so yeah, I would say U.S. is my home now. Yeah, yeah, and I guess for Jr. as well, because you've been there, you've been there your entire life. Do you still have some families in in the Philippines, or everyone's in the U.S. Most now? Of my dad, or at least half of my, more than half of my dad's family is still in the Philippines. So yeah, I don't, and I don't know most of them because there's just so like my dad is the youngest of like twelve, 
So wow. there's a lot of like, yeah, like a lot of nieces and nephews who are older than me, you know, the, the whole deal. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of cousins and aunts and uncles. I wonder how um, parties there are. Because I guess like here in Dubai, I have a lot of family as well. So whenever we have a gathering or just like a birthday party pre-corona, um, everyone would be cramped in one space and you'll have all of the Filipino food yeah, all together. that's exactly what happened uh, when I went home in 2019. <laughs> At my cousin's house, it was all just like me and my cousins in one room, <laughs> just spread out with like a mattress at the floor. <laughs> We're like sardines. <laughs> <laughs> but that's but that's so true like every filipino gathering i've been to my parents always introduce me to another tita like this is your cousin i'm like who are you <laughs> like how do i have so many cousins how do i have so many like it's i don't know philippine gathering you like you just meet new family all the time and like I'm, i've never met you in my entire life but okay your family your family now <laughs> this is your tita from kuwait and this is her son and he's your best friend now i'm like okay <laughs> i don't know how to feel about this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's how Filipino Filipino families are and that's that's what I'm super thankful for because you realize that family is very important um compared to let's say uh, like different countries or different cultures where for them they they instill a sense of independence um within, you know, the young ones like 18 you have to leave your house and with other friends that I was um that I've grown up with it's not the same as how like Filipino families treat each other because it's like super important. You have everyone from not just your, your um, how do you say it, first related family, but also your aunts and your uncles. And it's it's a normal thing to have them live in your same house, right? So, but, but it's not the same with other cultures and they find that just a little bit odd. Like, oh, okay, everyone's living in one house. Like, yeah everyone's living in one house it's like a, a happy and noisy house all the time <laughs> yeah but that's um also like like i'm 30 and i still live with my family and every time i bring it up to my parents that i want to move out they're like oh no we're not western josh we're filipinos we live in the same house forever <laughs> like what it's not a western thing i think it's just about <laughs> being a mature adult like yeah. moving out. did you face the same thing like growing up like when you want to move out or your parents were just like do your own thing now and move out of your house was it anything like that uh, for me, uh, since I am an only child <laughs> and a girl, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you don't move out until you know so and so. Yeah. What? What is so and so? What is so and so? Can you elaborate on the so and so? Married. After you're married and have kids. After you're married mm -hmm. and have kids. <laughs> married and have kids. <laughs> then you can move out. Yeah. Then you can go off on your own. But leave the grandkids. <laughs> Exactly. And even even like s sometimes, even when you have kids and you get married, you still live with your parents. For example, my sister, she's married. She has two kids and she still lives with my parents along with my brother. I'm the only one who decided to move out, but we're still all in Dubai. And it wasn't wasn't an easy thing for me having an Arab dad and having a Filipino mother and saying, I'm leaving the nest. So they're like, nope, not going to happen. But um, I think... I think it all just depends on you. Like, if you want to live with your parents, live with your parents. Like, it, it helps you save. If you want to leave and be independent, I think it's fine. It's totally mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Like, being 30 and living with your parents, that's it's okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a normal phenomenon, I think, in uh, in Asian households anyway. Yeah. But that's, yeah. I think it's something we should... Uh, I think it's it's great part of growing up that you can actually decide to move out if you wanted to. If you have the means necessary. If you yeah, have the if means, you're, yeah, if you're privileged you're enough to, yeah. to leave. Yeah, that's true. Uh, being being in, in the US for a long time, do you speak in Tagalog still with your family members? And do you are you able to speak Tagalog? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, my mom even like struggles sometimes to speak in English even though she can yeah and so uh yeah I would and when I on the times that I would speak in English to her she'd be like and then something like that um but yeah I do speak Tagalog to most of my family yeah um, and yeah you yeah. as well I teach all of my family Tagalog <laughs> oh that's nice I don't believe him for some reason like <laughs> <laughs> He's on to you. <laughs> I caught you too. No, but uh, how about when you speak to each other? It's always always in English. Sometimes pun, sometimes sarcasm. 
Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's the language. I get it. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I don't really. I don't speak Tagalog. I just whatever she teaches me, like words and phrases, and then stuff for videos and like tongue twisters. Um, food. Food. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Are you in? Are you in? <laughs> Um, but that's pretty much it. So mm-hmm. I like I'm slowly learning more because a lot of our audience is from the Philippines or is like uh, in the Filipino culture, and so even yeah. just, like, just like, reading the comments, like "Hey, bless you, what does this mean?" or like I'll just translate it there in the app, which is cool. Button. But when it's too much slang, I'm like, all right, I don't know what this says. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> the, yeah, it's not all. <laughs> um, but then, so yeah, it's kind of got me more exposed to a lot of like Filipino speakers or Tagalog speakers and whatnot, and they're always asking like, "Where are you guys from?" and all this other, I speak Tagalog for 24 hours. So it's, for me, it's a lot, it's been a lot more exposure to like Filipino culture um, than before. And I think living in California, because my, um, my aunt lives in San Diego. And so I was asking earlier, there is a huge yeah. Filipino community. Um, is it the same where you live right now? Oh, uh, um, okay. So it's actually, it was actually a bit of a shock when I moved to, to here from Washington State. Because Washington State, like, the nearest seafood city in Jollibee were, like, 45 minutes away from where we lived. <laughs> and so we wow. really had to, like, travel <laughs> to get... To get I thought you said Jollibee, Jollibee, like, the like, first thing. Like, it's the main <laughs> Filipino cuisine. <laughs> it is. Jollibee is life. <laughs> Based on the food that's around. On the, yeah. <laughs> it's <true> <laughs> yeah okay. it's like, yeah. But, yeah, when I moved here, um, actually, the, the, the one that, like, kind of shocked me was, like, when I was in church... Uh, in one of the churches nearby, I was like, am I in the Philippines right now? Because majority, probably like 90% of the churchgoers there were Filipino. And I was just hearing Tagalog everywhere. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> this is a lot of Filipinos. <laughs> and then there's All so many the Jollibee's around compared to the ones in Washington. I was like, oh my goodness. I will never... You're in civilization now. <laughs> 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 my, my, my aunt actually works for Seafood City. So when you said it, I was like, I know, I know that. I wasn't fortunate enough to visit it, but um, I've heard a, I've heard that a lot of good food is in f- Seafood City. Is it like Dampa or something? Um, apparently, it's like a. F- is it a Filipino store, grocery, it's like grocery a store? Super, yeah, Asian supermarket type thing. Yeah. Oh, that was a restaurant. Because whenever they went there, they they would always bring like Filipino food in the more like in in the afternoon. I would come back home and I'm like, oh, Filipino food. Yeah, she's like, oh, I got it from work. So. But, but do you get a lot of Filipino products over there, like pancit canton and like tender oh, yeah. juicy? Everything is over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, most mostly, yeah. Yeah, and especially in our area, like in Cerritos area ish, mm-hmm. or like Artesia maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just basing it off of where the Filipino restaurants are. So I'm assuming <laughs> there's Filipinos there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and even in NorCal, where my family's from, like Milpitas, there's a lot of Filipinos, and like um, parts of like Daly City and in, in NorCal is like a lot of Filipinos. Again, lots of like jolly bees around there, so I, I know for sure there's Filipinos there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, I think that's how you judge the area. Like, okay, lots of jolly bees here. This must be a Filipino community. You know? Yeah, jolly bees just opened up here a couple of years back. <laughs> <laughs> the same here. So jolly bees just opened up a couple of years back, right? Like five. Maybe yeah, like less. around four or five years ago. And there was just one jolly bee in the biggest mall in Dubai, and the queue was insane. You would you would queue for like what more than an hour. And you can only get a limited amount of items because they don't want you to hoard. Like, you cannot order more than six pieces of chicken. Like, in the first, like, few months, they would, like, cap it at because there was so many people waiting in line. And, like, and it was funny, not just Filipinos were queuing up because other nationalities would, would be so curious. Like, what is this line that's happening? But now, like, fast forward five years later, there's, like, a Jollibee everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, probably more than 10 Jolly Bees in Dubai now. What is this, what is this Bumblebee now? doing here? Why are you selling chicken? Are you selling chicken? <laughs> <laughs> but I would say it's not as good as the Jolly Bee in the Philippines, though. Everyone says that. I don't know. It's the same. Like, I don't know if you've had uh, Jolly Bee as well in the Philippines. But everyone says, oh, no, it's so different. I don't know. But I, I can't tell the difference, to be honest. Uh, right? Kind of, I feel like. But, like. but the similar things, like, does it taste the same? Um, I, I don't think I've noticed it enough. Maybe the chicken, but like the gravy is fine. For me. Yeah, <laughs> the gravy is bomb. I can have gravy as shots. <laughs> I can down that. 
how how is it how is it going for you guys um with cuz here in here in Dubai or the Middle East we've been hearing you know the news and we see that all of these like Asian um Asian hate that is currently happening in the US I know that sometimes the news can exaggerate a little bit so maybe you guys can just like enlighten us on how how is it um currently it's still going on I feel like yeah, yeah. I mean it's definitely been worse since mm-hmm. Um, you know, like pandemic and everything. Um, I don't think I've experienced anything personally, but a lot of close friends of mine have like um, uh, accounted like personal situations where like someone was being hateful towards them and a lot of social media for local, like locally where we live of news incidents that's happened. So, you know, and on the local level, it's not something that's exaggerated. It's like, this literally happened in our city like this weekend. Um, so it's definitely happening a lot more than, you know, past years, I, I'd say. Um, so yeah, it's still going on. Even of like um, a couple of days ago, I think I saw like on my, my news feed a friend posting about something that happened to them. Uh, so it's just very unfortunate. Yeah, I, I I feel like this. It's not just now in the states, but there's also like you know other countries where there's hate towards the Asian community because everyone feels like that you know the Asian community started it or the Chinese have started this whole virus and now everyone's suffering because of it but it's not it's it's not really the hate and it's sad to see that this is happening right after the Black Lives Matter movement happened mm-hmm. and now it's like targeting another race like haven't we learned from what just happened or is still currently happening with like the BLM movement here in the UAE we don't experience um blatant racism because you can get like you can be put to jail for blatant racism or talking smack about someone or um de- defaming them on Instagram or social media you can get to jail for that but there's still subtle um hints of racism here and there especially with like you know the arabs versus asians or like the europeans and the whites versus asians and the way that um that the way that people get their wages based on their nationality so that's still unfortunately you can still see that happening um it's being recognized more and more and they're trying their best to combat that but that's how we experience racism here in here in the the UAE and yeah. they they play a lot of stereotypes as well like um they say okay women cannot drive or the arabs are really hot headed so they really take that to heart over here but uh but what Janina said is right i don't i don't know if you guys also face it but like different nationalities will get different salaries here in the UAE which is like an unspoken kind of thing but uh everyone knows about it at the end of the day so like if if i'm an indian then i know that my my cap will be at a certain amount or if i'm a filipino i'm get my cap will be a certain amount where other nationalities will like they will be able to enjoy a higher salary compared to the same job that we're doing yeah or maybe because they're in a different field for yeah. example like filipinos mostly here in the uae are in the hospitality field so either they work on um either in the hotel or restaurants or anything that is like F&B um and then you will see mostly in terms of like managers and people who work in the office um again we're not generalizing but that's that's how it is currently and it's nice to know that people are trying to break the barriers and now there's a lot of filipinos who are achieving so much and that's why we also created this platform because we want to you know we want to elevate people who are breaking barriers and saying you know we can't be put into a certain box we're not just this we're not just that and that that's what we're trying a little mm-hmm. a little bit of that and pushing at least pushing that narrative more more and more yeah we, that's a, that's what we're trying to get on this platform that's why we 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 wanted to have you guys as well like we've seen your content we've seen how you make people laugh how like you pop up on uh my explore page and like so i'm pretty sure like a lot of people are are watching you and like giving you a lot of good feedback and they're saying oh we miss you guys like we miss this kind of especially during lockdown we miss this kind of humor yeah. as well cuz filipino hum- humor is very unique like th- like what yeah. with what you guys just do like it's it's like a play on words but then it it gets people going and i'm pretty sure like a lot of people like share your content with other friends as well so that's also that's also so cool to see you know that's very cool to see What's what's cool is like when um like when one of our friends will send us our video saying that their friend sent it to them. Yeah. 
you know, not knowing oh. that they knew, that they knew us. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wow, it's really getting around because now our friends are like, you know, uh, seeing our videos from other yeah. people. Right, and it gets shared regardless if they were your friends or not. It's just because you guys are like making them happy, you're naturally funny. Would you say that it it is mainly because of your Filipino roots? Like for us, like our uncles, they're, they're always the funny ones in parties. Like they always put out these dad jokes in parties. I'm, I'm sure you guys have the same. Yeah, I think so. I mean, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I know, about, I know about your family, but like, uh, yeah, like my my family's full of comedians, comedians. Comedians. Like, <laughs> yeah, because like Blessy met my dad, and he's just like he's the he's the epitome of like dad jokes. And so me me and my sister growing up were just like, ugh. But then now I turned into my now dad. <laughs> now I have like the same stupid humor, but uh, people like it. Uh-huh. And yeah, I mean, same with like my sister as well, and like. My whole family, we all have like similar sense of humor, and a lot of like the Filipino stuff, like my aunts and uncles, uh, like the the use in a sentence ones, like a lot of those, the ones that we've done were ones that we didn't create. Like it's been out there, right? Like use Paul four times in a sentence. Like that's something we heard as a kid, yeah. Or like it's it's just out there, and so when people see it, they're like, oh, I know this. Like it's a Filipino thing. Yeah. But even people who aren't Filipino who are like, oh, I have Filipino coworkers. This is so funny. I get it. Um, because we say <laughs> only Filipinos accent. will understand, but they, they know the accent. So it's not, we're not really excluding people. We're just putting out content that's relatable to people who are exposed to the culture. And then even people who aren't exposed to the culture, um, they get exposed to it and then they're like, oh, this is funny. And then it's another way to uh, bridge the gap, but like, you know, expose our culture to other people. Yeah. Yeah, the Philippine accent is very easy to understand. Like, I mean, if I hear someone, I'm like, okay, this guy's Filipino for sure. Yeah. And it's easy to mimic as well. Like, it's easy for us to make fun of the Filipino accent as well. So I think it's it's a very unique accent, which I really enjoy, like, making, not making fun of, but, like, abusing it to some extent, <laughs> exaggerating. I think that's what we do, yeah. <laughs> Just, like, beat it down, you know? <laughs> Especially with our moms and, like, well, not my dad because he's Lebanese. Like, when my mom, when she speaks and, you know, in her Tagalog accent and my siblings and I we always make fun of what she says. She's like, "Ay nako, na naman, na naman," all the time. And I'm like, "Mom, you're you're used to it already. Ever since we were young, like we always like mimic your your Filipino accent." <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's also what bonded us as siblings. Uh, I don't know, if bless you, like, get this, but like, because you're the only child, but like whenever like my mom would shout at us. And she would like stammer or pronounce a word wrong. Like all of us, like even if we're being yelled at, we would like look at each other and smile. Like, <laughs> is this woman for real? <laughs> I think that's why their content works because it's very shareable. Like, you know, these these funny things, even as what JR said, even if you're not Filipino or if you know one Filipino, you'll be able to share it to that person and be like, you're just just like this. Like, I heard what they said and you sometimes say the same as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. It's very relatable. It's very yeah. relatable. Like anyone can get it. Like a person in Africa versus a person in the Western world, they'll all know like how a Filipino sounds like. And yeah. yeah. And it's nice that they're shedding, you know, light into the Filipino culture as well. Not just the Filipinos around the world, but also to other other nationalities which is which is what we want yeah. you know for people to know more about our yeah. our beautiful culture but have you guys received any like yeah. uh like backlash or like some guys like stop making fun of our accents or anything like that have you ever received anything like that any hate messages like once or twice yeah. there's like a like a very niche group of people who are like um like we'll say like oh people who make fun of the filipino accent or like just take it personally but you can tell it's because of their context right like they're taking it personally whereas a majority 99 percent of people know that it's like good humored fun and it's yeah. not like it's not demeaning the accent or the language sure. some people will be like oh wow bless you, so smart she came up with this pun but some people will be like oh, are you calling Filipinos stupid because they can't use English? You're like, no, it's obviously like we're, it's a play on words. So right. it's funny because there's two meanings to it, right? Mm-hmm. But then you can't really interpret, you can't really make someone interpret it the way they, the way you want. Mm-hmm. So people are allowed to misinterpret it and think that it's like a negative thing, but you know, very far and few between. Yeah, I guess it, it, it outweighs, I mean, the those amount of people versus the people that you're able to bring smiles to. It just like outweighs the whole thing. And I'm sure that you have a lot of TikTok audience members who 
comments because i see that all the time when like a person comments negatively everyone else like starts coming in and be like why are you why are you saying that and everyone starts commenting next to that which is nice because everyone's building like a more positive um you know community rather than a negative one yeah but there's still always like haters everywhere i mean in in every platform (laughs) Yeah, there, there. I think there will always be haters, and someone's like, "Oh, this is not even original." But we, we know it's not original. Like we just like maybe hear it somewhere, and we try to make it into a video. And yeah, I just some people are always there. There's always going to be people like that. Always, always, no matter what. Yeah. What would your audience, and of course our audience, um, expect from you guys in the future? More content. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of interests that we kind of just want to or they just want to share um so and we're just trying to i don't know get more creative with them um right. so a lot of the same stuff also we're gonna keep making the ones that people have loved from us um but yeah mostly uh, good humor uh, yeah just humor and a um, couple stuff um yeah just to, yeah entertaining people because we're, yeah we're both very like artistic creative entertaining type entertainment type people um so like just with self-awareness knowing that's our strength and then like sinking on that um doing it together it's like such a fun process and that people enjoy like our like just our natural chemistry um yeah just to provide more like more smiles and happiness in the world for people uh you know if we can do that for a living that would that'd be like our, our goal like our ideal is to just you know make people laugh entertain them and, and be creative and try new things but um, like putting up positive, like net positive content in the world, I think is very important. Yeah, and I think it's it's nice that you touched upon the relationship or being a couple as well, because I think you inspire a lot of younger, um, not just Filipinos, but also other teenagers and Gen Zs who are on TikTok and YouTube, and they see you guys as like a happy couple. Um, of course, it's not. I mean, it's not always that way. Like for us, it's not always happy and and you know, smiles and all that. But it's nice that you you are able to impart that, um, you know, that little glimpse of happiness to them as well. And that relationships should be light, you know, and funny and that you can be more of like, because we when, whenever, whenever I look at your videos, it seems that you guys are truly best friends with each other and that, you know, you're super comfortable with one another. And that's really nice to see. <laughs> <laughs> I was so synchronized like, like, like they knew it was coming and I see some comments of, of other people saying are you guys siblings you know are you related we're, we're siblings siblings, siblings. siblings. Yeah. Like, like, it was siblings like how you spell it siblings and so we made a video we're like yeah uh, we're si- are you guys siblings, you guys siblings? <laughs> are you guys siblings or siblings but, but I have a question for you guys I don't know if it's too personal but do you think like do you have like regular date nights or whenever you meet like you're always like brainstorming and thinking okay what do we do next or how do we take our tiktok or youtube page forward or is there is there like time for you to like relax go on date nights and everything like that yes like how do you manage your times (laughs) yeah yeah definitely uh we try to put out like a tiktok video at least once a day Mm -hmm. um and then we just think about like i don't know more content for yeah, mainly TikTok and YouTube also, and Instagram sometimes. Um, yeah, we, we put out, like, our joke of the days on our Instagrams. Um, and then, yeah, we definitely have date night, not too frequently, but, like... Mm-hmm. We try to watch, like, a movie at least once yeah. a week, like, uh, in theaters, like, AMC, now that theaters are open. Or, like, before <laughs> in the past months, we just do, like, a movie night, like, Friday or Saturday night or something. Mm-hmm. Um, because we both like watching movies... So um, it's good to have, like, that break, um, even though, yeah, like, for the last five, six months, we've been, like, pretty diligent every day, setting aside, like, one to two hours of either filming or brainstorming content, um, just because we got to have that consistency and develop our artistry <laughs> still. Um, but I think we both know that it, there's a healthy balance to, like, you know, we're not planning on, you know, spending six hours a day, like, until we're, we can't keep, like, can't stay awake trying to do content. We, we need some sustainability, and I think... Um, even though it's good for our relationship that we're creating content and have like a, have a goal that we can sync on. Um, it's also good for us to take time away to, you know, relax, have fun, like go out to eat somewhere or like go on a trip or yeah, food. 
um, or just hang out. Mm -hmm. So like, I think, I think every, we make, we do a really good job at making time for ourselves. That's like outside of just creating content, but it's also good that we can create content while we're out. So it's like a win-win. Okay, so you're like two birds, one stone. So like you try to do a lot of things as well when you're when you're on Disney. Yeah, and sometimes it's an excuse to make content. We're like, oh, I guess we got to go get food because we're going to live stream and we got to do something. <laughs> we got to get milk tea because I have a joke about milk tea. So like... <laughs> no, I think incorporating your, your personal like dating life with um, your content is good because then it, it shows a little bit more about yourself. I think that's when people like to follow other people, when you show them a glimpse of your personal lives as well and not just this is me on social media, but this is me in my personal life because then it shows you know authenticity from you guys as well. And that's why they're able to relate much more. That's true. But, yeah. but do you guys see this as like a full-time gig in the future? Like, just making t- content on TikTok or do you guys currently have like actual jobs as well or you want to make this your full-time thing? Yes. We do. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, that would be nice to, to do this uh, full-time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we both have full-time jobs yeah. um, which is why we do this like part-time like mm-hmm. on the side. So okay. Even just answering comments is like a part-time job because yes. we oh, like to respond sure. to as many people as we can to make that connection um, and like DMs and everything but um uh, yeah, I think ideally if we can make a living doing something that makes us happy, like ha- something that we do together that's so much fun, uh, that's that's like our goal. Yeah. That's cool. Because I, I don't know if you guys know, what is that other TikTok couple in, are they in Canada? The Filipino and the... Eileen. Eileen, Christine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I watch their videos and they're always pulling pranks on each other. So it's like... Yeah, and it's and it's I don't know I don't know if it's weird or it's fun, but like if I have was oh. like my my significant other was like constantly playing pranks on me, I would always assume like there's a camera around, and I would I wouldn't like completely believe. <laughs> is this for real? Is it real life now? Is like, it did happening? Like you really cheat on me with my best friend? <laughs> like it's like, no, I don't think they I don't think they prank each other that way. But it's not like the bad prank. It's more of like the silly cute pranks. Because like the guy I don't know, I think his name is De- Devon or something. He's like always super sweet to Eileen. So but I my, think but they, my they just. Show. will be up the whole time yeah. during a relationship so true. i would i would never really know what's real and what isn't true so it's like I, I don't know i think you need to just find a balance i guess like not necessarily only prank videos but i like what you guys do as well so i think it's just also coming down to what kind of content you want to put out in the world people love pranks though yeah like the couple pranks they, they get a lot of views <laughs> and and i mean that's the first viral prank. video <laughs> yeah your first viral video is a prank video pranks. like they're not our pranks aren't even good <laughs> Like, because we don't believe each other. Like, <laughs> immediately, once something is off, we just start laughing. We're like, ah, uh, like, okay, yeah, whatever. Like, oh, yeah, you're breaking up. Like, I've tried to break up with Blessy like, six times on camera, <laughs> and none of them ever work. And so she, she thinks we're still together, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, we're still together. I was like, oh, okay. I guess this prank was unsuccessful. There's no way out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly you're locked in JR. you're locked in i think blessy you should do the prank the other way around like give it a couple of like time now because now it's in his head but try it in the future and then see how he reacts to it like you should try breaking up with jr and see how he takes it <laughs> oh i just said how the turntables <laughs> exactly how the turntables <laughs> exactly well i think i think that's that's most of our questions is there anything else that you'd like to to ask them no i'm just i'm just really excited to see what you guys have uh stored for the future i think you guys are gonna make it very big yeah um because even i i do stand up here in the uae and i and i see you guys you can actually maybe even pull up stand up over here or anywhere else in the world actually yeah she mm. actually does that too yeah i do a little bit of stand up uh, before the pandemics like you know closed everything down but that's like one of one of my like uh new passions is to just to be a better stand-up comic super fun i like i just like the process of creating a set and working on it and like the science and the art of it is perfect yeah fast. especially someone like 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 us as well like filipino we have a lot of content to talk about and like like people like jokoi or like the, most of their content comes from like families and their mothers and it's like they can do a full one hour set on just talking about their moms and i think that's that's another beautiful thing that we have as filipinos that we can make fun of anything and everything and people will find it relatable at the end of the day. Yeah. That's true. Well, if you guys ever visit 
well, the Middle East or Dubai, you're super welcome, and we would be very, very honored to to have you guys here. We have a lot of audience from over yeah. there too. They're always like, "Hey, shout out UAE and, and, yeah. and Dubai and everything." Like, "Oh, cool, yeah." We, they're like asking if we want if we're ever gonna go, and like, "Yeah, of course we will if we want to." And there's Jolly Bee here too. We can bring it to Jolly Bee. <laughs> Because <laughs> usually, like, if you fly all the way to the Philippines, the Middle East would be like a, a stopover in between, like, the US and the Philippines. So maybe next time you guys. Well, we have to do it for content. So I think we should go. Yeah, yeah so exactly. It's good for content. <laughs> I guess you have to. I guess you have to. <laughs> No, but we, but we would love to ho- see if you ever come to the uh, to the side of the world. Like yeah. I can make sure that you get into some open mics if you want to try stuff and yeah. some places where you can film uh, Insta worthy videos and pictures, anything like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be your official tour guides. Yeah, for sure. Of Dubai. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this, guys. Uh, before we close off, would you just like to tell our audience where can they stalk you? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. <laughs> We are everywhere <laughs> at Jerem Blessy, J R A N D B L E S S I E on TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Instagram Twitch. Twitch. <laughs> Ooh, they're everywhere. Twitch is that like the gaming gaming site? Uh, the live streaming platform. Yeah, when you can't sit still. <laughs> Just Twitch. <laughs> when you have an epileptic attack, <laughs> is it Twitch. like that dance step? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we plan on also doing that uh, on in the future, just mm-hmm. streaming. Yeah, more live streaming since Twitch is like the best platform for that. So we want to do that more of that. Um, you know, once we transition into lots of like daily stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, Jaren Blessy on everything. Yeah, if you just Google, awesome. maybe probably our social media stuff will <laughs> appear. Yeah, and it's also linked in our in our profile. Yes. So there's a we have like a Beacons AI like a landing page that's linked to all of our socials. So go check it out. So thank you guys for watching us once again. We hope you enjoy that episode. Please. I did. Okay. <laughs> One person. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really did. I did enjoy interviewing them. And it's so nice to see, you know, content creators who are Filipino living in a different country other than their home country and being able to reach out to not just Filipinos, but also other nationalities, you know? Yeah, like, everyone, like, whenever p- people think of, okay, when foreigners think of Filipino entertainment, it's like, oh, Jokoi, or, or, I don't know who else, um, Bruno <laughs> Mars. But then, like, there's so many other talented and great Filipino content creators, and that's another reason why we started this podcast, to bring these guys into light, and uh, share good discussions as well with different content creators across the world, and please do... Make sure that you subscribe to us on every channel possible for your all your podcasting needs because we will be having a good series of guests lined up in the future. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please do make sure to subscribe to our channel. Please do like this video so we are motivated to put on more quality content and click on that notification bell so you're notified whenever we push out new content. And if you're opting for the audio experience, please do follow us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And please do give a five-star review so that we can bring out this podcast to to the world and uh, share our Your support love. helps us. Yeah. It, it really does. does. It really does, guys. Yeah. We wouldn't be here without you guys. We wouldn't be on episode 40 without you guys. Yeah. And also, we're going to put in all of the ad handles and the social media accounts of JR and Blessy so that you can stalk them. They're already super big on TikTok. And we just know that they're going to blow up even more. They're yeah, going to do so, really I, well. That's what we said at the end of the podcast. Like, I'm so excited to see what's in store for them in the future. And I know that this is not like the last we're going to hear from them because they will be really big. And I'm pretty sure most of you have even stumbled across them on uh, TikTok. Yeah, as they said, they have a big audience from the Middle East. So that's really awesome for them and for us that we're able to get them on the podcast. Yeah, so shout out to to all our listeners all across the world. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. And on that note, have a nice day. Why is your energy so low? Because it's 6 in the morning. This is the time I go to sleep. Bye, guys. We love you. We like you as a friend. Bye.